Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Scrub Cast. This is approximately episode 11 or 12, and this is going to be an excellent episode. Let me just give you a rundown of the guests. We have RTD, everybody's familiar with him. Cheap Me Too player, uh, some call him old school, but I think RTD considers himself somewhat new school. We'll get into that. We have Astaroth, uh, pretty good Astaroth player. I met him at Kumaid in Tennessee. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good, pretty good. And we've got Salt Face, uh, who traded on us for injustice, but that's all right. We'll still allow him on the show. Uh, how's it going, man? <laughs> it's going pretty good. <laughs> and we've got Zero Effect, who recently won Apex. How's it going? Oh, I'm going good. And we've got Blue Boy, or Blue Scrub, who just won <laughs> Kumite in Tennessee. Or, you know, I let him win, so we can yeah. do it that way. I'm a okay. very I'm a very <laughs> generous person, but most people know that. So, uh, without further ado, I, I really appreciate everybody kind of just being ready and showing up on time. This stuff is usually extremely hard to pull off. Just trying to get everybody on at the same time. You saw how how hard it was to get Salt's internet to come back in to get Blue to, you know, get back to the house when he was supposed to already be at the house. It's it's really hard. <laughs> hey, in my defense, it's snowing outside. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cold here in Mississippi. But the cool thing I noticed is that we're all kind of close. I mean, you know, most players are going to be in the other locations, or that's where they have the tournaments. And uh, Lee, or Astroth, he's in uh, Nashville, right, Tennessee? Uh, yep. Yeah, RTDs, Georgia, Salt Faces, Georgia, I'm Mississippi. So that's pretty cool. But Blue Boy is... California, Zach, is, where are you, like, New Jersey? New Jer yeah, South Jersey. South Jersey, cool. Oh. But, all right, let's get into the show. So the first topic we're going to touch on is Kit, which just happened. Uh, Blue Boy got first. I got second. So BTS was in top two. Let's go. And uh, Astaroth got third. What did you guys think of the tournament? And RTD got fourth, by the way. What did you guys think? How was it? I think it was a great tournament besides the grand finals. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, grand everybody... finals was pretty nasty. The, the only match I saw from the stream was on grand finals, and I just saw everybody saying this is bullshit, and there was like collusion, and there was just like, I don't know what was going on, but yeah. I saw five characters all get beat by Patroclus. Yeah. And it was so sad. <laughs> it was so sad. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think I owe everybody an apology for the terrible grand finals, but uh, at, in the, at the end of the day, BTS still won. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was a great tournament. Um, we pretty much had a lot of top players there. 27 people showed up to this tournament, and oh, wow. I think a lot of people went there, and they're like, hey, nobody's going to be there. Yeah, that's the thing, man. Uh, and. And then everyone showed up. And then everyone showed up. So, I mean, just to give you an idea, I mean, we listed the top four, but we also had Mick coming out of retirement. We had oh, a wow. few <laughs> players from Wisconsin, man, like man, Mystic Mick Bill and Jimmy, Jimmy Pikachu. Yeah, Jimmy Pikachu as well. We had Big Boy, who plays Tekken, who got seventh. It's like, Big what? Boy. We, Yo. Had, <laughs> yeah, we had Sludge there. We had some yeah, guy named... We had yeah. some guy named Omega Bomber. We had like Lil Majin who plays Tekken. Yeah, I uh, actually met Lil Majin at the Fall Classic. I played him. We yeah, he remember you. <laughs> very, <Yeah>. very, <laughs> very, very, very nice Cervantes. Had Salt Face, obviously. And I mean, it was it was a stacked 27 man tournament. Yeah, I think I most of the hype evolved around Astaroth. Yeah, and, like people were town hero. Yeah, people were just cheering for him. And you know, Astaroth is hype. He's grabbing you. He's taking half life. <laughs> You know, he's breaking your gauge, and he's so manly. And, like, the Super Smash Brothers were players who were behind us, and they were, like, getting hype for our game. And then Astroff gets beat, and then he gets eliminated. And, and everyone all, stops watching. All of the hype is gone nice. out of the tournament. <laughs> what and, is... And then you got Grand Finals. I think so, we uh, I mean, c congrats to Blue Boy. That was a good win. I mean, Thank I you. think he's. I think he's showing you the way you need to play this game. You need to go forward, not backwards. Right, right. And I mean, you just got to play fearless. And um, I mean, you got to do it Zeph style. Zeph does the same thing. He pl he plays Pira and he plays 
uh, Patroclus, and he, he goes in and, and does strong mind games. And you can see how effective that style is. It's a very, very effective style. <clears throat> Even when um, something unique play played this game, he picked those two characters, Para and Patroclus, and he was, he was pretty much unstoppable. Playing a very similar game, but he ran away a little more, and he turtled. But I think Zeph, the West Coast style, Zeph and Blue Boy definitely have the idea of how to play uh, such a, an aggressive game. And um, if you guys haven't seen it, make sure you go back and see the KIT vids. It was a good tournament, and it was stacked. And we got a lot of stream time, too. Yeah, I groomed that, Pat. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you were talking about the, the numbers. When I saw the pre-registration list, I was actually surprised myself. I was like, whoa, 21? And then uh, once everyone registered at the door, we had a total of about 28 and 29. So all of a sudden, I got really excited about the numbers. And I had a conversation with Vandy just about how well Soul Calibur V was treated. Man, he was a great TO. He was great to talk to. They did an excellent job organizing the stream and the tournament itself. So like RTD was saying, we got three or four whole hours of stream time uninterrupted. Like, I don't, I'm not sure we, we've ever gotten anything like that for Soul Calibur. And um, they had banners up. I took pictures of it. It's on Blue Boy's phone. He should upload it of some of the Soul Calibur Five characters. That was really cool, man. I felt like, you know, they were doing a lot for Soul Calibur Five, And I'm, I'm just anticipating next year's kit. I really am. and I, I tried really hard, by the way, to get the Astroth banner just because I needed that banner. And uh, someone told me it was 40 bucks, and I said, uh, maybe not for that much, but <laughs> since, my, since I go by Astroth and I just used Astroth, I should get this banner. That was my argument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone, yeah, that was RTD saying he wanted to just snatch down a banner, or maybe that was Bibulous. Someone no, it was no, it was me. Oh, that I was wanted you. that Tira. I wanted that Tira banner, man. <laughs> just, just, just like snatch it and walk out and see if anyone noticed. Hey, was that Soul Calibur three Tira or was that Soul Calibur four? Soul Calibur that, that, four. That was Soul Calibur three Tira. Oh. <laughs> hey, so let me ask you guys this: like, I noticed that DOA was there um, on finals day, and I, I'm I'm presuming you guys knew the type of um, prizes that were given like we they had high pot bonuses and we also had a pot bonus too which was really nice two hundred dollar pot bonus but those guys also had uh, trophies sculpted and um, you know Vandy did a good job of making those ma making sure those trophies were sculpted from the beginning it took a few days and they were beautiful when they were done and I noticed that DOA was a main game and it was on the, the stream and I'm wondering, and, and they, I think we have more numbers than those guys, and that's like a 3D game. So you know, maybe if we show Vandy there's enough interest for Soul Calibur Five, we could have it as a main game with or um, without uh, DOA, because it was definitely more hype to watch. We, we we got more of a response from the crowd uh, from from Soul Calibur Five than DOA Five. Right, right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I didn't even realize that DOA was uh, was like a main game and that the finals were going to be played on Sunday until that day when someone mentioned it. So that was kind of surprising to me because I thought we had more numbers anyway. <laughs> we did. Uh, I'm pretty sure we had more pre-registration than DOA. Yeah. Yeah, and like I was saying, I did have a conversation with Vandy because I was letting him know that as a community, we really appreciate them including Soul Calibur Five and doing all of this and told him I was going to give a, a good word in for him. And just let everyone know that uh, they did all this for Soul Calibur V a kit. So yeah, shout outs to Vandy. And I'm looking forward to kit next year. Uh, let's touch on uh, Astaroth. Uh, are you uh, an old school guy? Um, I've actually, my very first tournament was in SC4 and it was actually uh, a KIT event. And um, I know RTD was there just because I remember the, the hat <laughs> and uh, and it was when I was first kind of getting into the scene, and then later on I saw him like on a, a stream. I, I can't remember if it was like a French stream or something, but he was up somewhere playing in some major. And I actually stopped and said, "Holy crap! I'm pretty sure I met this guy, or I played this guy before." So uh, 
Yeah, I, I played in SC4 for a bit, and uh, the first tournament I went 0-2, and, and then my second tournament I got second only to Lil Majin. Um, and we actually went to the last match, last round. But, uh, but yeah, I've been playing since 4, and then 5. 5 has been pretty fun on top of that, and I've been going to tournaments for it ever since. So uh, That's cool. You're already established. You know, before the tournament, some people were hinting that you were going, and, and um, you know, I didn't know anything about you. They were just saying, yo, this Astroth, man, he's going to F people up. And uh, that's certainly what you did. When I, I know when I played you, I was like, I lost all morale after I lost the first two two matches. I was like, man, gosh, I, I can't break his defense. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, your zone game, it's, it's, it's really, I don't know, I couldn't get around it. Yeah, it actually used to be a little bit better because, like I said, uh, I, I still am pretty rusty. Um, Reptile can actually attest to this. Me and him used to play pretty much every night for hours on end. So, um, and I, I used to just guard a lot more. I used to just guard into CE, um, just guard three Bs and, and uh, punish with just 5K. So, yeah, I was missing a lot of that crap, but but overall, I still had, uh, I think it was also matchup knowledge too. I don't know how many people play decent Astros here now. Um, but there, there's some there's some matchup knowledge too that people can work on on top of that. Yeah. What do you think about Astaroth and Soul Calibur Five as a character? Uh, I mean, he could be a little bit better, but his damage output is ridiculous. Like uh, RTD actually said in one of my matches that he was commentating, um, a two two B Brave Edge will completely turn the entire match around. Yeah. So yeah. um, so once getting one of those, I mean, I, I actually think he's fairly balanced. Uh, there are some matchups that just completely suck, like the the Alpha Pat matchup, uh, regular Pat, uh, Pira, or Omega, just those, just people with strong well, the, a a B the Greeks front on top of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, cool, cool. <clears throat> uh, and uh, you were talking about Blue Boy. That's uh, so you got first place there. You also got first place at some kind of local thing in California. It wasn't local. Um, it was Exit Wounds. It was actually a NorCal tournament. And yeah, I got I got first place at that. Okay, well, Blue's starting to do a lot of damage now, so that's cool. Keep it up. And uh, Saltface also, yeah, yeah he, was in, he was in the tournament. That, that was one of the hypest matches, Saltface versus Astaroth. Yeah, man, like... I'm yeah, still thinking. I'm still, think, I'm still thinking about that one <laughs> when you did the, um, the fully charged bull rush. I wanted that launcher so bad just to end the game. Right, right. <laughs> I, sh I should have just sidestepped it, but you know, you gotta live and learn with those decisions right, like that. Right, right. Man, but all in that all, <laughs> I had a lot of fun though playing Soul Calibur again. It was it was like it was a very fun tournament. It was well organized. You know, it was good to hang with you guys again. You know, Bunny it was good to you know meet you, chill, hang out once again. RTD it was it was a lot of fun, you know, us playing that game again. Like it, it really made me miss the it really made me miss the caliber scene, you know. It was like this is where this was the scene where I first, you know, I first started getting a name for myself was in the Soul Caliber scene because of you know because of me playing Tira and all that. Right, right. Yeah. You know, me and Blue were joking about like what if. Uh... <laughs> What if Blue met you in the tournament, and he was saying if he gets Bop, he's gonna counter pick with Zwy? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, really? No. Yeah, because was, I, I know everyone saw Evo. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what, do, what do you think about that Zwy matchup, RGD? Zwy versus who? Mitsu. Anybody? Mitsu. <laughs> Mitsu? Yeah. Mitsu wins it hands down. I think I think Zwy is more of um. A character that can destroy you if if you don't know how to fight him. He is heavily string based, but um, we don't really have enough high level Zwys here or any dedicated ones. Well, oh. Zane Zane is. Oh man, just yeah. Just, the the, the just other Zane. On Zane. I'm sorry. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Zane is, but other than that, we don't have a plethora of Zwy players around here. So. It's kind of hard to say where he places. Like, uh, I think the consensus is that he's a bottom uh, tier character, but in my opinion, like every character is is viable in Soul Calibur V. So, uh, I, yeah. I would have to play the matchup more to 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 figure it out and and to see how good he really is. 
But if you're coming in and you don't know anything about the character, I think he can easily destroy you. Like, for example, IRM and I think Mighty Omega played recently, and Mighty Omega just totally threw IRM off. But as they played the matchup more, IRM started to do better in that matchup. Cool. Yeah, I think that was the I think that was the only Thunderdome that I actually saw was uh, IRM and Mighty Omega. Oh yeah, I saw that one too. Because like I could instantly tell that like the way Iron was playing it, he didn't really know what was going on at the time. Like at the you know at the beginning of it, he had he looked like he didn't have the matchup knowledge. He didn't understand the spacing and how like you know Ein. Well, that's the name of the wolf. Is why it brings out. He didn't understand how Ein worked, so to speak. But like you said, as he played it more, and the more and more he was playing it, the better and better he got at it. But Zwei is one of those characters that if you don't understand how to fight him, he w- will, and I'm talking about with all caps, will destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's uh, very yeah. easy to forget, uh, or not, uh, it's very easy to not study that matchup because you really don't see anyone play him, so it's... It happens to people. Hey, uh, you can say the same thing. You can say the same thing with my character, Tira. It's the same thing. Nobody plays her. <laughs> well, we, we are yeah, my kinda... <laughs> No one plays Pat these days. Like last year, I know a lot of people played Pat. There were like four Pats in a top eight in Evo. But this year, you don't really see much Patroclus anymore. I don't know why. I don't, see a I, lot I don't... of you see you see a lot of Pira though, but not Patroclus. I don't think anyone should play Pat after what happened recently. Uh, I think we should put a permanent ban on Pat, and uh, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I think Pat should not be included in Soul Calibur Six. That's he, what I think. He, he's a messed up character, <laughs> but like when you think about it, nobody plays nobody. Like there, there are no specialists really out there. I mean, you got a oh. few, but 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 due to the <laughs> due to the balance of the game, there's variety. So you always see like top players just playing around with various characters and like exploring the game due to uh, the balance of it but I mean you, you do have some character specialists out there but um, like our, I think our scene is really evolving and that's why you don't have someone that's been playing the same character for three to five years and just maining them since day one there are a few people out there but like like we don't have like for example we don't have Ralph players we don't really have um, a lot of Zwei players, we don't have a, a lot of players. So I think it's evolving, and um, like Blue Boy picked up Pat, and like he said, no one was really using him. People messed around with him, like LP and myself and other people, but no one has really said, okay, I'm going to make Pat my character, main him, and master everything about him. Well, Zach, did you have anything you wanted to say about uh, <laughs> Kumite in Tennessee? Um, Before we move over, I would have night? to. I would actually have to have uh, like go back and catch some of the archives and stuff to see some of these hype matches. But uh, like I said, the only match I was able to see was the grand finals, and the stream just <laughs> like <laughs> like just tearing it apart. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> hey, what did you guys think of grand finals, RTD? What did you think of grand finals? It was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, so, I found out that, um, Bunnies plays every character in the game. <laughs> Except Tira. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and, and, uh, I, I, I just, it just, like, you, you beat me with, you, you beat me in a tournament, so I had an idea of how you played, and I saw you use that style against Bunnies, and pretty much you came, you, you were in losers early, so you just kind of ripped through everybody. Yeah, who knocked you into losers? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I mean... Deal. I, yeah, I had to play pre-patch not to. We played on the pre-patch console. Oh, so. oh yeah, yeah. There was oh, that other my thing. Good. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I couldn't. Was... Yeah, I couldn't like six six be to cat catch back step. I couldn't rush down. It was hard, but oh, Wait, no. what? That was yeah. that was allowed. <laughs> How did I mean, even? Yeah. I, I I didn't Dude. know. I didn't know it was pre-patch till after the first match when he hit me with an A plus B. Uh-huh. It comboed into one A. Oh my god! Then I was no, and then I was noticing like my six six B wouldn't catch back step. But what can you do? The like match is already halfway done, so we just played along. Oh, we got to oh, run wow. KLT back then. Yeah, you got it. Man, I wish. Yeah, we we have to like patch Tira, man. 
<laughs> yeah. We have to give back the oh. plaques and everything, delegitimize it all, start over. <laughs> right. I can give him my plaque back. No way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bunnies, before uh, before we move on to Apex, I just wanted to say I didn't even realize how far ahead I, I was in our match and that you ran it back. I didn't even realize in our matches that you ran it back three matches in a row and that I was ahead two matches in the final. Yeah, dude, our, man. Uh, like, that I, was <laughs> I, yeah, like, you know, when, when you're in the match, you don't realize it, but I right. actually I went back and looked at the matches because I, I like to analyze how I did. And... At, at, before I, I I came back, it was you were up two rounds, and oh you were up two matches, and you were on the you, the third round. All you needed was one more round. Right. And, and right. out of nowhere, somehow I just I brought the whole thing back with yeah. Ivy. I, I I don't I still don't know how I pulled it off. It's crazy. But uh, well, one thing that was affecting me was that I had multiple people coming up to me saying I was about to get DQ'd in my Marvel pool because I was holding up an entire Marvel pool because I was in those finals. Um, and I tried to warn them that I was in uh, Soul Calibur finals. Uh, and apparently, and then on top of that, a close friend of mine that lives in Memphis, we had to play in our very first match in Marvel in our pool. So that sucked too. So I had a bunch of different things running in my head. Um, like right there, and, and I was told all of that right there in our last match, so it kind of sucked there. Um, I had different stuff going on, but but on top of that too, you played really well and you adjusted really well, and I started rushing in like crazy. So no, I knew that that bunny's wind was fraudulent. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? I, after Astroff beat me, I, I think he was just like, "Oh, I, I've done my job. You know, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and check out at this point." And, right. right. Um, Go ahead and well, play see, Marvel. I told Ruben the night before I sent him a message on Xbox Live. I said, "Just watch KIT, just for me to beat RTD." That's all, I, and that's all I told. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? People, people are like, "Oh, Astroff and RTD in the finals." They, that's what they predicted. Right. And then you get Blue Boy and Bunnies in the finals, Our and finals. you just never know what right. this game is going to throw at you because this is really was such an aggressive game that forces so many fifty fifties. How can you predict anything? Anything right. can happen in this game. Exactly. That's what's so Especially good about it. Factor. That's, what's, yeah. that's what I love about tournaments in this game. Like, you never really know. Yeah, like, everybody loves to watch this game. Why? Because you're always messing the other person up. And you don't see any timeouts. And you don't see any running. <laughs> I, I can tell you one thing, Astroff. I know I was probably the biggest surprise for you at the tournament. <laughs> Yeah, you had, to fight, really, you had to fight my Tira. Like Tira player. I was, I was thinking, come on, because I have very little um, matchup experience in that anyway. So when I was yeah. fighting in the in the match, I was still. I think there was even a few times I got hit. Um, I forget the notation for the move, but where she rolls on the ground and it does like eight million damage to you. Uh, oh yeah, and it the, looks uh, like a low. You're talking, yeah. the, uh, four, four, you're talking about the four four, four B. B charge yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I, I'm pretty sure I, I ate that a few times when I shouldn't have, but but yeah, that match was still a lot of fun though, a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a pretty hype match, man, really hype. Yeah, man, like, like yeah. That, I said, that was to me one of my best moments of the weekend though. Still, was that match? It was too much fun. Yeah, it was really close. It came yeah. down to like a pint of health versus a pint of health, I think. <laughs> Oh yeah, it did. It came down to the last guess or whatever, but he ended up getting the uh, counter. Hit, what was it? The counter hit four A, and you yeah. ended up grabbing for the win there. Right, right. And I think even if you did, you break the grab. I can't remember, but even even if you would have broke it, it still would have killed you. Yeah, yeah. I did <laughs> with A, but it didn't matter. Right. All right. Well, I think that about sums up sums up Kit. That was a really great tournament for me. I hope it was just as good for you guys. Uh, Let's go to Apex. That happened recently, about two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, and uh, Zero Effect won that, and we have them here. What's going on, Zach? How do you feel about that? Um, it would, to be honest, that uh, I mean, for those who may not follow it, uh, Apex is generally known as the Smash Brothers. Like that's their, I guess, their Super Bowl or whatever. So Soul Calibur was kind of like a, just like a side event, and um, when I went there, it was more. I was more concerned about just getting some offline practice before Winter Brawl because our Philly scene pretty much is non-existent at this point. Um, you know, life happens. So uh, when I saw Jay, I'm just like, all right, you know what? Uh, Jimbo's supposed to come here. 
if I can make sure he doesn't win, that's really all that I can. I'm concerned about at this point. And uh, Jim couldn't make it. He had, uh, I guess, some issues with his transportation or whatever, so he couldn't come up. And uh, so this was actually the tournament I was the least concerned about actually placing first. And we just when we started playing. Uh, well, before I get to my my win, there was a moment there that I really wish could have been caught. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the Avalon group. Yeah, um, I, they, I think R- RTD knows Avalon. I do. Blue Boy. Uh, I've, I assume I've heard Salt of it. Face. He has to know them since they do Injustice, and he's familiar yeah. with Caliber. Okay. So, I mean, so they're basically, like, they run a lot of these events and capture a lot of matches and stuff and, and try to help out with the community. And... Uh, Cross of Ravens is kind of like the head of it, and his sister, who goes, I guess, by the name Sin of Ravens, uh, she hasn't really been playing, and she just started trying to play in tournaments, and she ended up playing EMP Royal Lance. And normally this kind of a match, it's like, you know, nobody really cares, but Jay comes up to me and he goes, you know, I really don't know what's going to happen in this match because... I've never seen uh, Ali Ali play, and and who knows who's gonna win. I think that if Royal Lance loses, he's gonna flip shit. And I don't know Lance like that, so I'm just like, you know, I don't think he's really gonna be all that upset. I mean, it's, he doesn't really place in caliber anyway. And I was so very wrong. He got beat, and just the this loud. A sound of frustration. He like bangs the table, and I just look up, and he just like double face palm, like head in hands, and it was just like that awkward kind of salt, like not not like the funny kind, but just like that holy shit, uh, <laughs> what's gonna happen here? And um, oh, oh man, it was. I really wish that there was some kind of player cam for that match, um, but unfortunately, since it wasn't on stream or anything, we couldn't catch it. But uh, I know Jim definitely would have loved it if he was there. Um, Jim, how, if you're listening to this at all, Jim, however you, however funny you think it was in your mind, that's exactly how funny it was in real life. Support the salt. <laughs> Support that the salt. salt was real. It was very real. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, so I ended up in losers pretty early, um, losing to uh, Cross of Ravens. I beat his Y pretty easily, and then he switches to Nightmare and comes back three straight. And um, so I have to go through losers, and I get all the way to JJJ in Grand Finals. And we play each other all the time, but I wasn't sure if I could beat him six games. And uh, the first set really was just came down to last hit for both of us. And the second, the second set was just com- a complete blowout. And it was, it was weird because it usually doesn't go that way. Our wins kind of go in shifts, but um, at the end of it, I'm really glad it happened because what a lot of people don't know is this was actually my first tournament win ever. Uh, yeah, Soul yeah, Calibur yeah. 4, Soul Calibur 5, I even went to Mortal Kombat and other games, but this re- it, the win kind of you know, took that load off my chest, like to know that, you know, if I had to stop playing games tomorrow, at least I can say I won something. And uh, so even though I came in not really caring about winning so much, I'm really glad it happened because it really, uh, it really opened my eyes to a lot of things. So, yeah, I know that in Soul Calibur 5, you normally do place, but you just, you always come shy of first place. It's just, yeah. it's just never there for you. Yeah, uh, and I know you're a good player. When I saw you finally got first, I was like, "Oh well, <laughs> it's about time." I know he's got to be happy about this. Yeah, <laughs> that's I got. That's pretty much every PM I got from that was basically either congratulations or it's about fucking time. <laughs> that's one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I know those messages, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I know it wasn't like a major, major, but still, like it was my win, so. You know, I can move up to the NECs and the winter brawls and stuff like that, hopefully in the future. But it was just good to get that win and not go through my entire uh, video game thing without ever winning. So That's cool. Let's talk about your character, man. You play Lasia. Yeah. So, um, you, know, you really got to put in a lot of work to win with Lasia. Yes. Uh, yes, you do. Um, as far, I mean, 
I feel like she's a type of character where she has everything she should have tool wise to win. It's just the reward is just not there most of the time. So you're basically out guessing whoever you're playing like three to one most of the time. And I don't, I mean, I can't really explain how I do it. It's just kind of like a mind thing when I'm in the zone or whatever. But for some reason, I've always been pretty good at making hard reads. And I guess we'll touch on that later. Hard reads. Um, <laughs> hard reads. Um, <laughs> hard, reads. hard reads is why. It's always invincible if you can make the right reads. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, I, like I said, I, I mentioned this on the uh, when I did the soul cast for her. Um, I, she obviously is good enough to win. It's just it becomes really hard at, at high level play when any mistake can cost you a round, especially if you're fighting like a Patroclus or a Viola, where it's literally the whole round if you guess wrong sometimes. So, um, but I mean, she's really fun to play, and I don't know. I just I play characters I like, and I don't you know I try to make them work to the best of my ability. Have you ever thought of switching mains? Oh, all the time. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's just you know after it's, a while, I, you, you, after you a while, it's just like this like. is yeah. I, I do that. Oh, it's, it's not only that, but there's sometimes like I'll play Pat and uh, Shiva sometimes in uh, like casuals or even Pira, and I'll be like, man, I wish she had this from Laisha, or man, I wish she could catch backstep with with like if Pira, I wish she had Laisha six six B, or I wish you know. And uh, that's just because I've just hardwired my style to play Leisha, so I know what to expect. But, I mean, there's no doubt there's other characters that are stronger. <laughs> and the other thing with Pyrrha, like, J Triple J was actually telling me to play Pyrrha, and there's based on how I play, there's really no reason I shouldn't other than I don't want to be that another Pyrrha player. Like, I don't want to be, like, just another guy on the pile, you know what I mean? Like, just another guy who plays... <laughs> I absolutely feel you on that. I absolutely feel you on that. I, I like to be unique too. Like, look at the characters I play in every game, like yeah. Harley and Injustice, Tira and Soul Calibur, then now Jiri and Street Fighter. These are like uh, characters like nobody, nobody touches them. Period. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, hey, more power to Lasia because I was excited to see <laughs> Lasia get first place. The only other uh, recent Lasia first placing would be. Uh, MT Fighter at Winter Brawl. Oh, last yeah. year, yeah. Where, where has he been? I haven't seen that guy in forever. <laughs> he he actually went to a tournament. I think he went to Filthy Cup, was it? And he had, yeah, he a, he had a, a mirror match with Zero Effect, and I think he won that. Well, uh -huh. yeah, we split. I won, uh, I won in winners, he won in losers. Oh. Yeah, and uh, uh, how many people showed up total to Apex? Was it like 10 or 15? Uh, I think it was thirteen. Thirteen. You know 12, when I 13. when I when I heard that, like how many people showed up? We were doing a Thunderdome with Jim Bonader and I, and uh, I heard that I was like, they were like, Zero Effect won a tournament. I was like, oh my gosh, nobody was there. Because they were like, oh, it's only man. two people in a tournament, and I'm like, that that's for Smash Brothers, like, and I literally meant nobody was there. <laughs> but and then I went back and watched the archives and I saw him play um Apple Boom, this the the Hilda player. And I was like, okay, he's 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 doing all right. And then I saw him beat up on JJJ uh in the grand finals, six games, and JJJ just won um a tournament, mind you, and he's a legit player. He's a he's a he's a good Mitsu player, and Mitsu is a better character than Leja, and I saw that and I was like, Oh my gosh, like Zero Effect is a legit player, and he always played who he liked, and he played Talim in the previous versions. Yeah. So that's that's why you never really, I mean, against high level competition, he, he always really got out tiered, but not outplayed. And yeah. when I see him win with Lasia, I was I was like, you know, I, like, I, like if that would have been me, I would have bodied yeah. the crap out of him. That's that's what I know it, man. Um. <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Like, hey, you never know, man. Like, why you never couldn't know. he play RTD's Me Too? Why couldn't he play my Me Too? <laughs> like, so JJJ is a very smart player, and um, he ma he makes really, really good reads. He had the right character. So I, I just knew that Zero Effect was playing on a very high level that day with Leisure. 
Yeah, he had some good Oki stuff going on. I was like, man, I'm glad I didn't have to be on the receiving end of that. So he would have <laughs> he would have destroyed my brain. <laughs> yeah, J- so JJJ just won the f- it was the Filthy Cup, and uh, I believe yeah. Zero yeah. Effect played in that, and I think he got third or something. Yeah, I got. And third. then I think MT Fighter got second. Right. Was that right? Uh, I'm yeah, not that's sure. Right. I didn't go. That's okay. right. <clears throat> so yeah, JJJ fresh off of a a win of, of a major, and Zero Effect had to compete with that and beat him just to win. Yeah, good, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Uh, Thank you. This will wrap up Apex, and uh, I just want to talk about this Zwei thread. So there's a meme that came of it. Now we will like joke around and say hard reads when something happens <laughs> like that. So in the Kumite tournament, Astaroth actually made a super hard read. He was playing this viola player. I don't know if any of you saw this, but like the viola was on the ground, and then the viola tried to wake up in 2A, and he did Astaroth's jump grab. Did you see that? <laughs> that, oh I yeah, I saw that. That. I, that was ridiculous Dude, when I saw that. That that was a extremely super hard read, man. That that's, that's that what Yomi. We, <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> when we say hard reads, that's what he, we're talking he, about. He, he did hard the same thing to me. Right? Like I went for a slide kick, and it was the end of the round, and he jumped over it. Oh yeah, I did jump. Man, beat. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was pretty cool. Hard That's the thing about Astaroth is that you have to you have to make those reads with that character because if you don't, you have to take those big risks. And especially like with jumping attacks, it's like I was I was explaining to somebody at KIT that those jumping attacks actually do screw up your combos too, even with three Bs or one Bs or whatever. Um, it, even though it's going to be a counter hit, the way that you juggle with a jumping attack, it's going to screw up whatever they're trying to do anyway. So even if you do get punished for it it's okay because you just you're going to land and you're going to be able to tech or get up and block anyway without taking too much more damage yeah. so. you, do, you do make excellent reads with Astroth. Uh, you make good use of his low grab which is really good i don't see if people use it enough but that it's like i13 it's got a lot of range and it's right and even even whipping it sometimes it's hard to punish it unless you have a character unless you do like a like the, the like, only the only way to punish it would be like to make a hard read or something yeah, or two B or something was it, it's it's pretty hard to punish. I was but, wondering, uh, like, why why weren't you using um um what is it? Is it one KK or is it one one K? One where he stomps and then he grabs. Oh yeah, uh, four K and then the grab. Oh oh yeah, why why weren't you doing that? Um, like, I, I don't use four K that much. Um. When I'm up close, I would rather either be grabbing or or uh, trying to hit you with six six k or four b or something, something faster. Uh, four k though, I, I don't know. It's just a weird preference thing. I don't use that move too much. <laughs> oh, because yeah, because I, I see a lot of Asta players using, it, and I was just wondering why you didn't use it. Right, and, and I have too. I've, I've always been confused by it too. Even even when uh. French players used it. I, I was kind of thrown off by it. I, I, I've seen it work for them, and I've tried it a few times, and it's it's always come back and bit me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind of like me. Like people always tell me to use um, Pat three A, but uh, I guess I, I I don't use it. Bunnies tells me to use it all the time, but like nah, I'd, I'd rather go with two three six A. Right, right. Yeah, that, yeah, that's just me. I, I would rather use moves uh, like RTD says that take seventy frames and that have a small step back and. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, like 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 the lawnmower. Yeah, the lawnmower. Was called. <laughs> uh, I told yeah. a reptile too because I was talking to a reptile on Facebook. Uh, I told him that was my goal was to hit a few people with a lawnmower uh, in the tournament, and I definitely yeah. did that. So I was pretty yeah. happy. <laughs> yeah, you, you almost hit me with it. Like we clashed. My, I think my B clashed. You, I know you hit bunnies with it. That was pretty right, cool. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's why you were the crowd favorite. <laughs> Yeah. They, they love those 70 frame moves I know <laughs> 70 frame moves are amazing yeah, I mean you gotta make some serious hard reads to pull that off hard yeah. reads hard reads <laughs> but, extra hard reads <laughs> so the, uh, so what what, ha- what? how did all that stuff get started with the this yeah, Y yeah there was an argument I was just about to get into that the argument was basically we have a Y player and um, you know he was defending Y saying okay maybe he doesn't well, uh, Jimbo Nader was saying he doesn't have tools like a bunch of other characters do in these particular situations. And the, the, the rebuttal from this Y player was that, okay, well, if we make the read here, the correct read, then it's it's a really good response. And, you know, the fact that he maybe doesn't have those uh, universal 
responses or those multi-purpose responses right. is kind of irrelevant if you just make the hard read. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. every character in the game, right? Yeah. 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 That's what, like, what I was about to say. I was about to say because any character can be like that if you want to, you know, yeah. talk about and, and, it, and it's and it's funny because other characters actually get more reward when they get um, <laughs> when they like get a hard read. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was, uh, it was fun though. Uh, shout outs to Mighty Omega for uh, defending Zwei. I mean, I actually want to play him. He probably might do really well in tournaments, but uh, it was just um, that the argument was kind of um, kind of misplaced because at the end of the day, it, it doesn't take away from the fact that he lacks the tools that the other characters would have. So it's more difficult for him. But if you make the hard read, then that's perfect. But uh, you know, you got to be about those hard reads, man. Hard <laughs> reads. <laughs> You right on that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about old school versus new school. So this has been blowing up the little Facebook group. And I think there are a lot of people in A-Way who still don't know about the Facebook group. I know I didn't find out about it until probably a year after being on A-Way Run. But uh, apparently people are trying to separate the old school from the new school to create a team match for final round coming up. And um, what do you want to say about that RTD? A lot of people consider you a veteran and uh, old school guy. And people, Cap considers himself kind of ancient. So I guess he's zombie status or something. <laughs> yeah, I've I've pretty much heard every category. I mean, they they threw around like legendary category. They threw around old school, new school, and then they just started asking like, what is considered old school and new school? And I've even heard definitions such as, like, if you have started since SoCal before, you're considered old school. But if you started around uh, with SoCal 5, you're considered new school. So I really don't know what um, the definition people will agree on. I just want a hype team tournament to happen. And I've, I spoke with Shinji, I mean, Shin Blanca about that, and he's been great about final round he's been supporting us and all i've done was ask the guy like hey can we get so caliber a lot of top players are coming he was like yeah sure yeah it's like just let me check the schedule and all we all i did was ask and shout out to sheen blanca because i remember when uh everybody noticed we weren't in the lineup and then you just talk to him and the next thing you know wow so caliber five is in the lineup so yeah it was on the web page you could you could register for it and you we're going to get a pimp cup the winner of final round gets a pimp cup. Pimp it's cup? gonna be a, a main game, and we're gonna get streamed all of it. Excellent! It, it'll amazing. it'll be awesome, man. It'll be an awesome event, and there's a lot of hype going around. And we're talking about the team tournament, um, which will be held on Sunday in the Bring Your Own Console Room. Uh, we just have to remind Shun Blanca about it, and we just have to run it ourselves. But he will allocate some time for us to do that. And the Soul Calibur tournament, so I'm very excited about that. I'm not sure what will evolve as far as defining old school versus new school, but I'm always down to play. And like whoever asked me to be on their team, I'm I'm like hell yeah. What do you guys think? Hmm. Uh, like this is what I was thinking though. Like what you were talking about before about the definition of old school and new school now. When they mean like somebody's like new school, do they mean like Soul Calibur four and on in tournament play, or do they mean like that? That's when they started playing Soul Calibur. So you want to get technical by that? I've actually been playing Soul Calibur for a very long time. I've actually played since like like Soul Blade. You know, back on PlayStation One is when I first actually played the series as a kid. I've been playing this game. I've been playing like the franchise since I've been about eight years old. But what I'm wondering though, what would, would that class, what would that classify me as though? Because how long I've actually played the series, but I didn't appear in tournaments though until like five though. That's when I first, you know, learned about the scene. When I first found out about your RTD, when I moved down here to Georgia, I had no idea. You know, you were t- you were a really big Soul Calibur name, and you say I've been wanting to catch up to you for a long time, man. <laughs> But anyways, uh, yes. what I was wondering, yeah. too, is about like that definition. How are they going to define that as a person being old school or new school? Yeah, and Zach, um, Zero Effect, you brought up a good point about that earlier. You want, you want to go ahead and say what it was? Oh, yeah, I was just saying that the uh, most of the P- 
people, most of the people you would think of that would be considered old school, they're pretty much not playing now uh, or probably haven't played in some time. So I guess the oldest, like the oldest generation of people that are still playing would be from four and up. And I don't know. It seems the gap just seems to be too wide for that. So, right. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Like I know RTD played in like SC2 and SC3 tournaments and things like that. So I would consider that old school. Um, but then all those people were coming in saying, no, SC4 is old school. And I, I kind of don't agree with that, but I mean, if they have to do it that way for this particular team tournament and I say, we can go for it, we can try that. Well, I think they, I think they would have to do it that way because there's not enough guys for the old school team if they don't. Right. Right. That's that's exactly the way I see it too. They would have to, it would have to be done that way. Like you said, the people that were, you know, actually playing during the soul caliber two or even heck the soul caliber three days, you know, like those guys, those guys are hardly around anymore. Like I don't, I hardly know anybody besides RTD that you know, and like some of the ATL people I you know that were around that you know played back in those days. Besides that, I don't know anybody else that played from those days. Yeah. yeah. So like I don't, I don't know we we may even consider other things like not just old school versus new school because. As Zero Effect identified, it's, it's like old school doesn't really span that far back. Yeah, they have to come up with a, a different criteria, yeah, I, like you were saying, because it's I, not working out the way they're trying to do it. And yeah, not even. Of, yeah, not even. Yeah, not even that. Not even like a different criteria for defining that, but also it could probably be hype. Just saying, hey, let's do East Coast versus West Coast, or do some type of regional thing, or. Like just team. anything, we yeah, just anything to formulate a team that does hype, you know, and I, I agree, something that I, we can discuss. I agree yeah. with that, Rob. I agree yeah. with that because just like how they doing injustice, you know, we have like, you know, we got the AK team, you know, that's that's Atlanta. We got the GGA, that's the Chicago guys, you know. We got um, what GEC also. Those are the Ohio guys, you know. Like we were, unfortunately, it didn't get to pan out the way we wanted to. We want, yeah, I still really wanted to do that team tournament though, but. See, that was like a region-based thing, and that worked out really. That would have worked out perfectly, actually. Yeah, it, it could, yeah, it could be BTS versus the world, for example. No, 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 no. That would please. be perfect. Man. <laughs> no, please, <laughs> please, please, no. <laughs> yeah, that would be exciting to watch. I know. Speak, um, since you brought it up, what is BTS? Like, where did that just? That just seemed like it came out of nowhere. Uh, well. Yeah, it's it's just basically they're a group of people uh, who play online with me all the time. We play our, with each other, and we're very familiar with each other. So we just like we would we decided to make a group, and uh, Saltface is in it. Shout out to Saltface, uh, but he kind of <laughs> just dropped caliber, so he he kind of became irrelevant. But he's back now. Well, I'll, well, I'm sorry. I had a lot of success and injustice, man. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> so, so it was me, Saltface, uh, Blue Boy, Menace, Sane. Now, Sane, he's really good. He just, he's, uh, he's a minor, and he just really doesn't have the ability to go out to tournaments, and that's understandable. You kind of just have to be able to do your own thing to, you know fly out to somewhere in another state or drive somewhere and, you know, sleep, spend the night at a hotel. It's kind of a, you know, there are barriers to that if you're not grown. Uh, but he's yeah, pretty yeah. good. I wish uh, he could make it out to a tournament. He was going to, I, I could have sworn he was going to make it to NEC. I even paid for his registration and everything because I wanted to see him go. That's um, the Ivy player, right? Yeah, yeah, same one. Yeah, because uh, Scion was telling me he was his ride or something from the airport. And, uh... I don't. I guess he couldn't get there or something. No, something what, happened. What What happened was, um, he said he couldn't get the money he was supposed to get. But the but the messed up thing is because I was gonna like give him all the money he needed. Uh, I was gonna like, yo, if you need anything, I got you. Let's go. He was like, no, no, I've got it. And so we're like two hours into the tournament, and Sane's about to get disqualified because yeah. he's, he's not there, and I'd already talked to. Uh, Avalon, and I was letting him know, well, he told me he's still showing up, and so they were very generous in how long they let him stay in without disqualifying him, but, you know, it came to a point where I was like, yo, it's, it's time to disqualify this guy, and then he finally called me back like an hour or two later, and he let me know what happened. He basically said he was unable, he didn't get the money he was supposed to get, and I was like, well, all right, man. Uh, I was I was real mad he wasn't able to show up because I really wanted him to uh, come, because I feel like Saint would, like, 
destroy people. He's good. Uh, but yeah, he, he couldn't make it. And he's, uh, then, he, he's free to pat though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then there's Woody and yeah, I think that's every, oh Zane, as in you know the wide player. So yeah, we oh, just you know oh. we, we used to play a lot online. We just made a little group. I mean, a lot of people have groups. So you know you've got Avalon. Uh, yeah, but usually the groups are like within the same region. I'm like, wait, you got bunnies oh, no, and hey. somewhere in the Midwest, and then you got Blue Boy in California, and you got. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Like, is this some kind of nope, like? Do they all just adopt three letters, and it just happened to? <laughs> like, yeah, it was, pretty, it was pretty random. And yeah, it's, it, you're right. It's not regional at all, but uh, it's you know reason why it has to be that. I, but we you can set up BTS versus a particular region. But you know, um, you, you know. Uh, like LP and Hawkeye, they'll like say Chicago. That, that's regional, but the, the main thing is when they say Chicago, they're talking about a group of people who train together and who play together all the time. So you, you've got their strength or their results of their training versus some other group's uh, training right. and, and results. And uh, I think it works perfectly like that. So, you know, when BTS got top two at uh, the recent event, I'm thinking, yeah, BTS, that says something. Or when someone from you know, multiple players from one region or from one training group get top four. That says something. So, uh, anyway, anyway, shout outs to BTS. We got to get Menace to place. He just kind of gets bodied at every tournament he goes to. Yeah, man. That can't be happening, man. I know. It's, just, <laughs> it's, it's time to drop him from BTS. We need results. <laughs> oh, God, we, damn. We, need, we, need blue, we need blue boys. <laughs> That's what we need. Wow! <laughs> tell tell him to start with the Greeks, no, he's and he'll level up tremendously. He's got to start with Viola. <laughs> that's the answer uh, to everything. Yeah, R- RTD. I was wondering why why didn't you use Viola um, at um, Kumite? Um, I so I, I I see some character weaknesses, even though she's very strong, but she lacks punishment. And she lacks range, and she lacks um, soul crush game, and she doesn't really have good whiff punishing. So, I, like someone like Mitsu fits my style a lot better. I, I think he arguably has the best pokes in the game, and he allows me to kind of mix up and and have a more well-rounded game. Yeah. So, definitely. if you look at any vids, you'll see that she has a fundamental weakness to range characters. So, like, when you see Kayani or LP or anybody fight someone like Keev, you'll always see them lose. Oh, yes. Like, like against like Lolo, that. you'll see them get destroyed against... When when I fought... Um, when LP and I had Biola, and we fought against Partisan's Omega Pira, he, he raped us, like, 3-0, 3-1. And, like, at the highest level, you can really expose that character's weaknesses. But at the same time, she can be the cheapest character in the game with her ring outs, her damage, and, and when she has meter. And she has the best move in the game, 4 4 a. It's hit confirmable, uh, stop sidestep, it has range, and it ring, rings out and leads to a stupid combo. So, like, there, there are more well rounded characters in the game, like Pat, for example, who, <laughs> who don't have, like, like, hard matchups against ranged characters like he could kind of get out spaced to an extent but not as hard as yeah so so if i once he gets his often started it's definitely really hard to stop him so if i if i were to win in that tournament with viola against someone like astaroth i mean you saw what he did to the last viola and i'm pretty sure the results wouldn't have been any different if i picked her um, I mean, with that said, we don't have a lot of Viola players, and there's not a lot of Viola matchup knowledge out there. But if people play Viola on a regular basis, that they'll find out that um, she's not the all-in-one answer. Even though she is the cheapest character in the game, she's not the most well-rounded character in the game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Yeah. No, I think with Viola, um, there, there's just, and maybe I'm the only one that thinks this, but... There's just a lot of power in knowing that your opponent can't make a mistake. There's just so much, like, if you have it in your head that as long as all you need them to do is just screw up something and you can turn around completely in your favor. Like, something like that is, 
you know, to me, it's just like if you can get past that, then you're you're halfway on your way to beating Viola. But if you can't, and if it's just if she's just coming back on you for one mistake after one mistake, it's like that that really does, especially in out of a three out of five game set, that really does weigh on you. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. Well, I think a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on Viola. Probably don't even want to touch on that. Uh-huh. <laughs> what do you think of Viola Bunnies? Oh, she doesn't frighten me. Have you ever played a Viola in tourney? Actually, no, I haven't. Not in tournament mm. yet. Or yeah, wait, uh, maybe at SCR. Oh, you played Exit Wounds, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Think. Just the way the way I see Viola, if you're able to uh, like apply good spacing and just avoid kind of getting caught in her vortex, and I'm not saying that's easy. Obviously, you're probably just going to get caught in a few times, but and you know if you can get around that, then um, I, I think it's it's pretty simple matchup. <coughs> yeah, and since and s- Blue Boy, since you play the Greeks, you can see how Zeph demolishes Viola. Um, Kinetic yeah, Clash with Thunderdome tried to pick Viola, and he went to Ivy very fast after like. Like yeah, like Zeph shut it down so hard with Pyrrha using auto GIs and spacing, and then he was just laughing. He was like, "Oh, I know how to fight her. He's nothing to me. <clears throat> She's nothing to me." Um, and he just just using a lot of back back step and spacing her out and a little bit of auto GIs, and it was just overwhelming for Kinetic Clash, even though he won Evo with her. Um, it, it it's a way that you have to fight her. But even so, I, if if someone were throwing out patches for the game, she would be the first character I would patch. I would patch her ring out. I would patch her damage, and I would patch the meter gain on her combos. They all need to be patched because it's it's, it's overpowering relative Absolutely. to what the other relative to what the other characters have. I mean, that's overpowering. The fact that you have ring out, you have damage, you have unfair meter gain, you have um, this unfair pressure that that's really really overpowering res- with respect to the rest of the cast. Wait, patching is never the solution. We must ban. We got to ban Pat. We got to ban Viola. After what happened recently, we also need to ban Astaroth. Uh, <laughs> is, is there any character I'm missing now? That's <laughs> why. That's <laughs> why. Because if he makes the correct reads, he can win. So you want to oh, ban that on. before that gets started, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Before the psychics come out, we gotta. Hey, oh, so you know what? So having Viola in is is good in a way because you have this this character at the top of the tier list or near it, and you you have like this enemy, right? And <clears throat> you have this challenge of fighting a character like that. And I think something like that is always healthy. Like someone's going to run to Viola to look for the easy way out, and then you you could have. Uh, a pick ready for her, or you could have the matchup knowledge down and uh, look forward to that challenge. And actually, like, look, like that, that'll inspire you to play and to fight that character and to beat that character as well. Yeah, there, fighting Viola definitely requires the proper matchup knowledge. It's like you guys were describing as why. If you don't know the matchup, you will get destroyed. With Viola, it's the same way. You've got to understand how to navigate the orb, how to duck the orb. If you don't know that, you get destroyed. And a lot of people don't end up knowing the Viola matchup, and it just makes things a lot worse. But Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. But uh, you know, I think we're at an hour now, and this has been a great conversation. Uh, man, I really thank all of you guys for just uh, you know being on time, except for Blue Boy. And um, <laughs> w- wanting to join, uh, I think yeah, was, yeah, I think this was great. You yeah, guys have fun. any like final words or anything? Uh, sure. Viola is cheap in the tier matchup. I hate her. <laughs> Viola is cheap in a lot of matchups. Rob, Rob knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love oh. 1K. <laughs> oh, Rob, yeah. Exactly. If if there was Rob a move man. we needed to patch, it'd be Pat 1K. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, what about that one B, man? What one B is even cheaper, man? I mean, hey, it's, a, it's a it's a mix up mid. It could lead to half life with me, and it's and it's even on block. I mean, oh, it's don't pretty good. The best, 
that 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 soul crush that is doing to uh, you as well. Yeah, it breaks in twelve. That. That's ridiculous. It, it, it's pretty great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just want to say um, thanks for having us on. Like, I've been playing the game for a long time, and no one has ever invited me on a show. So I'm happy to be here, and I'll come back anytime. And yeah, I just want to here. say, I just want to say, man, um, like congratulations to Blue Boy. I'd love to see you guys, and and then like Bunnies, just like up and coming players like you guys who started with whatever, like online or whatever. Just come and like beat good players, and you're not scared, and you're doing well. And also, um, like zero effect for winning with a character like Leja, even though he has to make a hundred more hard reads than anybody else. And I just want you guys to like, if you can, just try to make it out the final round. It's going to be hype. I mean, like Shen Blanca has done us a favor, and he was like, "I'm going to add it." And you know, if we do well this time, we won't have to ask next year. It's just like, hey, this guy, these guys have a scene. I'm going to include them, no questions asked. And like so far, the the, the roster we have for final round is like Zeph is coming, and he's he's pretty much been undefeated for a year. He's pretty much like arguably the best player in the U.S. Like he won NEC 2012, and he won MLG Rally for like over like over six thousand dollars. So like nobody has that like his play is as close to perfection as we have now. Uh, Thermidor he won final round last year, so he's coming back this year to defend his title. Kinetic Clash won Evo to, uh, 2013, and he's coming to final round. And Partisan is he's most likely going. He's on defense right now. We're just helping him with um, airfare. Uh, Reptile from Canada, he's coming. He always places like top three, top four in majors. Yeah, he has the he best eye in the round, and he is frustrating to fight. And the guy is so good. Like, Astroff can attest to how good Reptile is. Yeah, Reptile yeah. is good. A lot of people like sleep years, on Reptile. I don't know if they just want to discount him because they all they only care about U.S. It's like, like Partisan is the special Canadian people love, but they don't really think about Reptile, who's also a beast. So. Mm hmm. Right. Exactly. And we I, have, I, I totally uh, agree on that. For a while yeah. too, and I know that he lives like way out. We all, we used to joke with him and say he used to live way out in the wastelands because he doesn't actually live in any major cities in Canada. He lives way out in the middle of nowhere, so it's even tougher for him because um, he could only play online for a long time. But he did finally start getting his name out there. He started posting more on a eight-way run, and then he finally got to go to like his first, his very first tournament. I think he got second. He either got second or third. I can't even remember uh, when that was, but but yeah, I'm I'm definitely hoping he comes out to final round too because it, it'll really be great. Yeah, and um, you know you know his his character's pet peeve, <laughs> you know that like, not not his character's pet peeve, but his pet peeve, uh, it's it's Viola. Like he doesn't he right. doesn't win the tournaments because Viola beats him. Same thing with Blue Boy at NEC. Like you have these exceptional players, but. That they're losing to Viola, and for good reason. That's a, that's a stupid character. Yeah, I, I got beat by Viola too. Oh, you got beat by Viola. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, Z oh, so Zane is also coming to final round, and he's the best Y and Party Wolf. Um, I think that guy is going to take a major pretty soon. It might be final round, but we we were talking about his turtley style, and um, it's very very effective. And he's been going back and forth with with some top players. Uh, Mick is coming, and Sinji. Uh, Swart Lord is coming. Uh, John Nitty, <laughs> Jimbo Nader, Ramon, Astro, oh, Hawkeye. Nitty the Oak. Shout out to your Nitty. Uh, who, who <laughs> Crazy else? Firefly. That's the man. <laughs> exactly, John Nitty. Yep. So he's coming as the hot dog. Ring Out is coming. He's helping out with the um, the airfare for. I, I, I heard Lolo yep. is trying to come, so we might get an international presence there. Oh yeah, if, if oh yeah, that's what I'm try, really pushing for international presence. So, um, if you guys know anybody across the seas and you want to get them over here, uh, technically we have that. We have Canada coming, so that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be amazing, man. <laughs> I know, this is gonna right? be an amazing final round. It is. It is. Really it is. Really true. It is. That's part of me. It's in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have the final round finish and start on Friday. We're gonna have the stream time and get a pimp cup on Friday. We could take that to the club on Saturday and party all night. The rest yeah. of the weekend, the rest of the weekend, we we have to party, and on Sunday we'll have teams. So um, we're we're gonna pretty much be laying back and enjoying the event because final rounds are really hype. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm I'm hoping with all this hype for final round that we actually get some people to show up to Winter Brawl, like you know. Oh I'm yeah. Trying to, trying to get MT Fighter to come back. I, and, I hope uh, some people show up for S C R as well. I know Zeph is yep. gonna be there, he's showing up. Yeah, yeah. He's talking about it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we can talk about some up and coming events right quick. S C R is coming up, Winter Brawl. Uh, what other events they got coming up? Uh, obviously, there's Evo, but well, there, there's SCR in final round, and we usually don't go any further than two events. But <coughs> that is a good point, SCR. I totally forgot that. Uh, but that's in South uh, California, right? Yes. And yeah. so uh, it... last year, Zeph won that. I was at SCR, and I got yeah. seventh. Uh, and. Uh, I guess uh, SoCal has a reviving scene. Who do they have? Hates, Signia. No, uh, that's uh, NorCal. Hates and Signia are NorCal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you're in California, you know. Well, we got me, we got Zane, we got Tomahawk, we got we got a really good Serbia player. He he goes by um, King Roctopus. If you guys know him, mm-hmm. we got Damon. He plays Raf, and we got Revan. He's another Patroclus player. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, Pat's uh, going to take first yeah. place at SCR. So uh, be on the lookout. For that. <laughs> yeah, and Connect Clash is going too, so he's going to mix things oh, up. Oh, yeah, he, he's not going to SCR. Oh, he's he not? Has, yeah, he has a lab that day. Okay, then Pat would definitely take SCR. <laughs> <laughs> Pat better take SCR unless he's that, win, uh, that, that win in Tennessee was fraudulent. <laughs> well, I don't know, man. There's, there's this really good Pyrrha showing up, and oh, well, yeah. yeah. Well, Greek player. Oh, well, yeah. well a Greek player. At, yeah. at least second. <laughs> if you get any lower than second, we'll have to like remove you from BTS. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to hurry up and we, win a major, man. We, we, uh, I've already done my job. We don't accept losers. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough out there, huh? Yeah, that incentive. <laughs> <laughs> But, all right, it's it's been great chatting with you all. It's uh, the show has run kind of long, and uh, we'll go ahead and go ahead and end it now. All right, all right, all right. That was fun, guys. All right, yeah, appreciate you having thank me you. on, man. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it thank was a, you. It was a great show. Absolutely, thanks for coming. Like, I'm just I'm so glad all of you guys were were happy to join, and you um, you know took some a few hours out of your your night to join. And so I really do appreciate that because it is hard to organize these things. When you've got multiple people, you have no idea. And so, all right. Well, I'm gonna hit. Go ahead and end it now. All right. All right. All right. All right. See ya.